enemy. Welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Casual with your boy Base the Kid. As always, please like and subscribe, share with a friend, a colleague, a relative, an enemy, an associate, and anyone in between. I appreciate the views. Uh, basis picks will be out later on today. Obviously, there is a big card on um, at the York Hall from Queensbury. And there's also the next gen card uh, on Saturday in Birmingham. Uh, so, uh, as I will be at both of those, I'm going to have to get that out shortly. But prior to that, some stuff happened yesterday, which obviously has to kind of be addressed. Um, I was supposed to do this video yesterday but time permitting didn't quite happen so we're getting into it now anyway uh, as I said like and subscribe and let's get into it so first things first we had the uh, two leg press tour for Canelo versus Charlo both legs have been completed right now and both of them were very respectful very cordial um, Charlo almost in his you know you know Canelo's a legend type bag and Canelo in a you know he's a great fighter type bag and we're just expecting to have a great fight and whatnot whatnot now a lot of people including Terence Crawford um, although Crawford said it in a much more sunning type way um, have basically alluded to the fact that Jamel Charlo hasn't been as you know amped up and as vocal as he as he can be in other press conferences or in other situations well Look, I've always said Jamel and Jamal, more so Jamal than Jamel, because if we if we're honest, at least like Jamel kind of backs it up most of the time. But both guys are very, very animated and fiery on camera, at home, in the gym, or when they just be talking to regular people or you know, whatever. But when it comes to like actually being in front of another fighter they don't never really get as loud and leery as you see them on camera that whole lions only and you know roar and anger and vitriol is just not there i mean jamal we got many opportunities to to see the the case study like i said we, we've seen what happens when brownsville brooklyn daniel jacobs pulled up on him the energy changed up real quick like we've seen Jam uh, Jamal with David Benavidez like basically running behind security before acting up and acting bad you know we've seen Jamal again I guess with the Kayla Plant slap uh, Jamel we've sort of seen in press conferences like the first Tony the, the first Tony Harrison press conference wasn't as fiery as he was getting you know on the uh you know when he was on camera and whatnot yeah they obviously had their back and forth but you know the same stuff that he was talking prior to that and even the second one like he was basically getting sunned by a tony harrison uh, regardless of what happened in the ring on both occasions so you know it's it's just one of those things i've come to expect it i see them as quote unquote that kind of flat track bully or like you bully people you can bully you get loud to the people you can get loud to but when it comes to someone that you know gets active things will be very different um all of that whole bitch nello stuff that you that you was seeing on camera there was none of that everything was cordial and yeah if i'm honest i can almost imagine that if he came back down for the whole terence crawford fight it might be the same thing do a lot of talking outside the ring but you go on stage and look him in his eye and you know the tone might be a little different because you recognize that this is a real problem in front of you and with Canelo we've seen what he does to people in the ring that he has a lot of respect for and that haven't done any trash talking or haven't slated him uh, you know some of them get hurt quite badly and then we've seen what he's done to people that he hasn't liked like at the time you know Caleb Plant and Billy Joe Saunders like we we see the situation so I think Jamel is basically playing it smart saying yeah there's there's no reason for me to rattle this guy and give him a reason to be even more fired up for this fight um I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a lot of money I, I'm gonna dare to be great and hopefully that's gonna you know train hard not have to cut as much weight and that should put me in good stead um uh, so yeah they they weren't particularly entertaining press conferences but I'm still um holding out 
and expect it, the fight itself <coughs> to be a you know a good one. So yeah, let's uh, see what happens with that moving forward. So on to the next topic. So on Wednesday, no sooner did I put out my video, obviously confirming the um, Alicia Baumgardner test news and obviously waiting for due process and trying to find out more information and whatnot. Well, Matchroom then put out their statement, which obviously you saw that I put on my little update video on the shorts, um, basically confirming, yeah, there was the test and they're going to now support her in, in whatever she needs for her due process and you know they won't be making any further comments with regards to it what came out after that was Alicia having a statement which <sighs> I'm not going to read verbatim but essentially she said I've been a clean athlete my entire life um, the substances uh, mest uh, mesterolone and mestosterone, I think was the other one. Um, these are substances I've never heard of, uh, never used them, blah, blah, blah. Then she said that she had a test um, that she did on the 16th of June and that test came back clear. She also did a test on fight night and the results of that test also came back negative. So there's, she is baffled as to how a test that she does three days before the fight comes back with some kind of finding, um, you know, she asked for the voluntary testing. It was her decision. Um, she stands by it and she's going to obviously go through the process and not allow anyone to believe that she could be a, you know, a, a dirty athlete and be anything other than clean her journey, blah, blah, blah. There's a, there was a lot in there. Now, ultimately, the thing that we have to look at is there was a previous test that was clean and a test straight after that was clean. Um, but there seems to be one where there was adverse. Now, I'm, as I said in the first time, the first video, I'm erring on the side of caution and I'm going to give all um, opportunities for due process and to be able to, to clear her name or prove innocence. I And I'm preaching innocent until proven guilty, um, which is what I do with pretty much every situation. Uh, it it is weird though obviously we we look at the the test in itself and you say okay well a test was taken on the 12th of july and then the results don't get finalized until the 10th of august and then reported on the 12th which is what we're we talking that's that's virtually a month um you know before before it's tested now apparently in terms of wada accredited labs there's like one in the uk and there's like two in America, as big as America is with the amount of tests to kind of go through there. Um, so it's like, yeah, how do you get these tests through quicker? Um, and what is the, I mean, essentially, I was speaking with Chris Andres, so a shout out to him. He was talking about obviously how you can kind of do the little micro dose in here and it was talking about the levels of testosterone saying that the testosterone levels for the test were consistent with that of a regular average man and 10 times what a woman would have but then my thing is for that what i don't understand is if it's 10 times how is it that in that one particular test it can be 10 times that, but then in the following test, which obviously we haven't seen, um, but that one obviously being classed as negative, I guess would have been back down to normal female levels in the space of three days. That's what kind of doesn't make sense to me. But either way, as I said, that's the kind of the information that's out there. Um, Alicia has been very vocal on social media. She's still posting. She's not running. She's not hiding. She's not cowering away. Yeah, okay. Turned off comments on, on um, Twitter. But ultimately, people can still quote, tweet and say what they got to say. Uh, but she's still, you know, she's still out there. She was on the boxing voice um, saying, look, I know, I know that I'm cool. So I ain't even worried about all of that, blah, blah, blah. All I've got to say is, like, 
she definitely believes 100% that she ain't done nothing and no one ain't gonna jam her up because you I've never seen anyone on this kind of uh, you know, on this kind of promo run off the back of a off the back of an adverse finding uh, so yeah she really must be innocent in her mind because otherwise like if she gets ends up getting banned after like all of that the posting and whatnot that's that's crazy uh but yeah i wanna i'm still obviously gonna give due process hopefully everything gets exonerated and she you know gets to move on with her career do what she wants to do but yeah that's just kind of what i wanted to put out there um there's a lot of things that just don't seem right with a bunch of the testing at the moment um it's a shame that even like people like eddie heard the match room are getting the blame uh, for people other people failing tests as if they're the ones administering the you know the pds or whatever but you know at least people at least the tests are happening that's the main thing and more tests needs to happen overall uh but i'm going to move on to the next part because that does coincide with what i just said so yeah, speaking of Eddie Hearn and Matchroom getting the blame for Matchroom fighters failing tests and obviously they would say, well, look, at the end of the day, at least we are administering tests. I mean, yes, the more testing you do, the more likely it is that people from our stable, our roster that we're working with are going to come up dirty or adverse or, or have failures i mean that's just what happens the more you do something the more chance there is of something happening ultimately well on that same boxing voice interview that alicia Baumgartner went on jessica mccaskill went on um weirdly because apparently she said she was at dinner with her husband but decided that she just had to leave him and jump on the jump on the on the call now rick had said made some comments on twitter prior to that but essentially she went on to the on to uh, the boxing way saying that ultimately I'm only going to say this once and you guys best screen record it now because I ain't going to say it again like when I was going to fight Ivana Habazin I was on I had one fight left on my matchroom deal they wanted me to sign another deal and I was I was basically taking long next thing you know they took my opponent and gave it to Terry Harper until I've now had to sign uh, a new agreement and then I've got this Kate I've got this Sandy Ryan fight and um, you know Alicia also she was she signed a multi uh, multi fight deal last year January or well, she's on the last fight of her contract and she's got a mandatory due um, you know maybe she ain't trying to play ball maybe she's just making them wait for the contract and then essentially you know that could be a reason why all of a sudden now she popping on a test and I'm doing everything in my power to try and get other testing bodies to come and test me now and before camp and during camp opposed to who Matchroom have got for testing because you know I'm trying to basically be sure ultimately insinuating that Matchroom is out here weaponizing tests against people with only one fight left on their career um, and Ness basically made her say it without, you know, without whole hundred percent presence. Like you, so you're saying that you think Matchroom are, you know, possibly the reason why this test is proper. She's like, I mean, it makes logical sense to me. Now, the statement itself was wild, but it's even more wild considering the fact that you have signed to this promotion on a multi-fight deal probably it's probably only like two to three fights like it's not gonna be no huge contract but you're probably two to three fights you're about to fight on the 23rd of september with this company and you're slating them like that bear it in mind this is the same company that has given you the majority of your paydays in boxing thus far like they gave you the opportunity against Katie Taylor back in the day when they didn't have to. They gave you the undisputed opportunity against Cecilia Breakhouse, which, you know, you didn't have to have that, but they gave you that, you know, you got the rematch for that. They gave you several defenses. And then even after that, they gave you the opportunity to go and be undisputed at 140. And now, you know, it's, it gets to a point, oh, all of a sudden, now you think they're about to try and spike tests out here. It sounded very much like someone who 
maybe believes that a test might come back against them and they're putting out in in the media a, almost a oh well like if my test come back dirty like don't think it's me like there's there's shenanigans going on um but that also then plays to the fact of maybe they are indulging in something or they have or they have a concern about maybe something they took or done that might end up flagging one of their tests and the best way to kind of get around it is to spin the narrative now i'm not saying that's the case but everything about that just seemed kind of off brand um and it's crazy because again you, you're, you're talking about matchroom like matchroom and the zone give you commentary work give you all these different separate opportunities and that's what you kind of come out with like I mean yeah that's I ain't gonna lie that's, that is crazy is it outside the realms of possibility no it's not like any and anything can happen but you know you're you're talking about even um, an organization like drug free sport who apparently do all of this stuff with American sporting outlets are they really gonna risk their number one their credibility their liability their lives that you know you can get put in prison for the kind of um, accusations that she's alleging um, yeah it was it wasn't cool and then shout out to October Red because she asked Eddie in an uh, interview regarding it uh, she did it quicker because I was definitely going to ask on Saturday but she's got to it so I don't even need to now so brilliant um, you know Eddie's like well no that's you know that's outrageous and I'm gonna be speaking to I'm gonna be speaking to them today and I know that he went on the phone with Rick because Rick put out a tweet saying I had a call with Eddie Hearn ain't seem too happy blah 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 um, so I'm about to speak with Jessica and you know see what's going on she put out a statement yesterday on um, on Instagram one of the Instagram reels I'm a, I'm I'm gonna keep it real. That statement was garbage. Like she said about oh well, you know I think the the overall conversation might have been a bit misconstrued. But I want to apologise to my husband, business partner, and trainer Rick, you know, for putting him for it. But then I'm just gonna you know if if anyone has maybe um, taken offence or, or you know misunderstood my words then you know i apologize as well like the apology was bullshit to be honest we got we're just gonna keep it 100 it was bullshit and clearly whatever she said she she's not taking back which okay cool like you say you stand 10 toes deep on whatever you say that's calm but without proof to back up what you're saying yeah it's it's nuts and don't be surprised if she signed this multi-fight deal there's probably a clause in there that a disparagement clause like you know that can allow them to avoid that contract now the, the fight for the 23rd of september has already been set if sandy ryan wins put his way don't expect to see jessica mccaskill on more matchroom shows and we'll see who else will sign her up that's kind of how it looks to me um i hope that behind the scenes they could sort something out at least to allow her to finish off her contract but if and if you do see her on matchroom shows she'll probably get matched up like against 154 pounders or something because yeah like i said them statements was wild and to say it without having the proof there and just throwing it out there it, it seems more like you're worried about something that either you've done that you're hoping doesn't come out or if you know if it does at least then you can throw the, the that out into the public so that you get you know so that you know people kind of look at the other team as opposed to looking at you it's just it's it's all crazy um and i think i i you know i like mccaskill and rick as as people you know while jessica doesn't have the greatest skill in the world she's not often in like awful looking fights um well no that's a lie she she's been in some real stinkers but ultimately she's um like she can be in fun fights they're just you know they are fun to look at but um yeah look i'm gonna leave that there i've got a few other things to do let me know what you guys think below um 
if you've seen if you haven't seen it i'll put the links to all those videos and stuff but i'm sure most of you have seen and heard it by now but yeah i just want to know your opinions like subscribe and share and for right now it's tactical casual out